Welcome to Warbond of Trains. Today we're going to be in the wood shop making 90 degree cuts. Chances are you have an example of one of the tools that we'll be going over, so hopefully this will uh, be some good information for you. Okay, as far as the setup goes, um, we got our piece of wood. We need to figure out a way to keep the saw at a 90 degree to the plane and 90 degree to the edge. All right, so what kind of saw are we talking about? Just a standard saw. Uh, this, is a, this is just a regular hand saw, nothing special about it. Uh, uh, no special teeth, no nothing. In fact, mine is kind of old, a little bit dull. Uh, one of the things you want to make sure of, this is all you got, make sure you have a sharp one. Uh, these are real cheap. Um, I'll tell you if, you, if you don't want to go ahead and invest in a better saw, buy a new one of these. Uh, it will surely help you get through the wood a lot faster. All right, so let's talk about your wood. First thing, to make a good pop, uh, square cut, you need to stabilize it so it's not moving. What I mean by moving is this. You don't want it to move while you're in the middle of your cut because it's going to mess it up. You're not going to get the smooth edge that you're looking for. So how we're going to do it, uh, I, I, again, we talked about it earlier. Uh, just some clamps. Now I have one that I've modified a little bit. Uh, you, you don't have to use this. You can uh, clamp it to a uh, set of sawhorses, anything you have. And uh, use what you got. You don't have to go out and buy something. Um, worse comes to worse, if you, uh, if you don't have any clamps, screw your wood down. I mean, it'll make holes in it, but you're going to get the job done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Okay, clamp it down. I can't move it now. All right, next thing. How do I get my saw to be square to two planes? Okay, first of all, I took the time to make a jig. To make this piece, what I've done is, is uh, I've taken two blocks of wood. These were just out of my scrap pile, nothing special about them, but the assembly was special. And what I did was, is I assembled it in a way that it is exactly square. And how did I do that? Well, I took my uh, combination square and I measured it. And basically what I did was I set it up to read square a couple of ways. One is this. And what you're looking for is light between the blade or the edge. It needs to be able to mate thoroughly and totally without any gap or movement. Okay, same thing with the other plane. Uh, basically, when I, when I made it with a piece of wood, I made sure that it was square this direction. Okay, and this way I know that the, my saw, when it rides against it, is going to be straight up and down exactly. Okay. And once you glue that, let it glue. Let it glue for the full cure time. We'll go about glues here uh, a little bit later. I'm going to have a segment on how to uh, make your uh, reference lines and how to uh, uh, pick the right glue uh, for your situation that you're going to be in. So, what we're going to do is, let's say I have a line here. Okay, notice a couple of things. To be square, if my reference from my jig is referencing the back edge here, I want to make sure that I strike my line using the same reference. I don't want, I want it to be square to the edge that I need it to be square on. If I use this edge, this edge may not be parallel with this edge. Okay, so I need my 90 degrees to be uh, off a of reference. I make sure that the reference I use to set my gate or to set my uh, jig, I use it to strike my line. Uh, notice one thing about the line, I just drew it once. No reason to go back and forth three or four times. You're making the line thicker than it needs to be. And you're kind of guessing where actually your blade needs to actually sit and start the cut. Okay. Take your jig, line it up right on the line. Okay, once it's lined up, you just take another clamp. Now 
make sure it's set up on the line, which it is, and clamp it down so it doesn't move. Now, the idea of this jig is your blade is going to ride on this surface, and that's why we made sure it was square this way and square this way. Okay, so that's going to make sure we get our straight cut. When you get your saw to start the cut, you place the blade against your jig, and you're just going to hold it there. And what I mean by hold it there, you're going to keep your fingers away from the sharp area, okay, and just guide it back and forth as you start your cut. And it's going to start uh, where it's supposed to be. The, the groove will start where it needs to be. And uh, once you get the groove going, the cut pretty much does itself. And let's go. Here we go. And once you're started, then you can let it go, hold the piece steady, and just continue the cut. There we go. Now you can see with your uh, uh, blade following the edge, you can see it's a nice flush cut. As long as your jig mates with your line properly, your cut will be perfect. Now notice with the saw, since the bottom is not supported at all, you got a little bit of fuzzies here. Just break the fuzzies with a, with a uh, sanding block. And you're all done. Okay. Once you're finished, okay, here's our cut. You can see it's actually pretty nice. The jig helps you keep your cut straight, no uh, discernible saw marks. And now the moment of truth. Again, referencing the same side that we referenced it on. And you can see there it is perfectly square. Okay, the second plane. And you can see there it is perfectly square. There is no movement, there is no light between the uh, ruler and the edge. What I'm talking about is right in there. Okay. So, you can see by how long it took. This is not really the best way to do it. Uh, if you have a lot of these to cut, like say you're running bench work for along the, a 20 foot wall, you're going to have a bunch of these to cut. It's going to take you forever. Can it be done though? Yes, it can. If that's all you got. Okay. Okay, let's talk power tools. We know we don't want to use a handsaw. So what do we get? Uh, we're going to get some sort of skill saw. Uh, it, it puts power in our hands. And what I mean by that, it makes a cut a whole lot easier. Uh, if your saw is armed with a new blade, uh, it's going to cut better. It's going to be easier to cut. And a saw that is easier to cut is a safer saw. Uh, you don't want to have a dull blade that you actually have to push through the cut. If you got to push it through the cut, if something snags with your force combined with it, that saw is going either going to bind up, give you a jerk, and actually could become dangerous. So, when you're starting a project, if the project is important and you need good, clean cuts, go ahead and invest in a saw blade. Uh, no reason not to. They're, they're not very expensive. Okay, first let's talk about the saw setup. And what I mean about the saw setup is we want to verify that the saw itself will cut a square line. Okay, the important part is, is that we want to use 
the surfaces of the base as the guide. And to make sure we get a, a, a square cut is we want to make sure that the edges of your base plate are parallel with the blade itself. So how are we going to do this? First thing, power's off. Okay, make sure your saw is safe before you do this. We're going to flip it over. First thing we want to do, we want to take our combination square. Okay, on my combination square, it's going to be probably kind of hard to see, but I have several different uh, graduations on it. Uh, we'll start here. I got one eighth uh, graduations. I got sixteenth on this side. On this side, I got sixteenth as well. But on this side, I got thirty seconds. And that's what I want to use uh, to check my parallel on my blade. I want to verify that my blade is parallel. I want to use the most accurate graduations that I have. So that'll be the 30 seconds. So how do I do that? I make sure I'm measuring on the tooth. Now, we don't want to scratch the tooth. We don't want to chip the tooth. We just want to bring the edge of the, uh, of the ruler to the tooth and I see that my blade is four and 15 sixteenths of an inch from this side. Okay, now to check for parallel, I check the back side. And again, putting it on a tooth. And again, this is exactly four and 15 sixteenths as well. So I know that this edge is parallel with the blade. Now to verify the other side, I want to just want to make sure that the two edges are parallel. And what I mean by that is not trapezoidal. Uh, this is exactly six and a half. And this side is exactly six and a half. Okay, so we know our dimensions are four and fifteenth sixteenths from the inside of the blade. To this edge okay if we had to use this guide I just measure on that side again on the tooth and I see that the blade is an inch and a half away from this side now these are two good uh, dimensions uh, uh, to keep note so you don't have to uh, check it over and over again write it down somewhere on your saw I have mine written down on my saw uh, so I don't have to go and measure it every time. I just look at my reference and I know exactly what it is. Okay, so I know my saw is parallel. When you buy a saw, you want to do this check. Do it before you use it so it's easier to return if it's not right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to set up for a cut. First of all, we've got to get a reference line drawn. Take my square. I'm going to use this edge as a reference says I want my cut to be 90 degrees with this edge. I need a quarter inch cut off of this piece so it's the right length for me. Strike one line. I know that I need from that 4 and 15 sixteenths. on my reference line, make a little mark, same reference edge, strike a line. Okay, what that second line is for, that's going to be for my square because my saw is going to ride on this edge. Okay, now that we've verified that our saw is, uh, is uh, good to use, we're going to go ahead and make our cut. We're going to use the square. We're going to line it up right on our reference line. Okay, first of all, the uh, cut is very clean. Uh, basically, this is due to the fact that we used a nice straight edge for the saw to guide on. Okay, there's no variations as the saw goes through if you did it freehand. 
All right, now let's check the square. All right, uh, the square is perfect dead on. Okay, no light. And again, we're using the reference edge. Uh, and same thing on the top plane. We are looking for a nice square end, which it is. Okay. So is this a good way to use? Sure it is. Um, I like doing this. Uh, uh, basically uh, this saw is a great uh, tool if you're on a job site and uh, can't uh, really carry a big, uh, uh, a big miter saw. So that is a nice uh, selection to use. Um, but is it my first choice? Uh, no. Okay our next option is going to be the uh, miter saw or the chop saw or whatever version of the saw. Basically it's a saw blade, it's on a handle, you can bring it down and cut your wood. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to go through a setup. First thing we want to do, let's get you lined up here. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure our blade is square to our reference and our reference is going to be our fence. Okay, we want to make sure that our blade hits the fence at 90 degrees. All right. Also, we want to make sure that our blade is 90 degrees to the top. And what I mean by that is this way, because this saw can uh, make angle cut, so we want to make sure that it is set correctly. All right, the tool you're going to need to do this. Your combination square. Okay, you're going to find we use this a lot, and this is what I was telling you about. You don't want to go cheap on your combination square. Buy a good one. Okay, so we're going to set this to measure 90. First thing, we're going to bring our saw down, making sure we don't have power on it, of course. And we're going to check it with the saw fence first. Okay, and it is dead on. And basically what you're looking for is making sure that you have no play. Okay, if you have play, adjust your saw. And uh, every saw is different. I'm not going to show you how to adjust it because uh, if you have a different saw, this is not going to be good for you. So just uh, open your directions, learn your saw. Okay, so we know our blade is square to the fence. Now we want to sure, make sure that the blade is square to the top. All right, and how we do that, I'm going to use a different square. My, uh, my combination square is too big. I'm going to use a small machine square. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the surface here. We're going to make sure that our blade is 90 degrees to the top. Again, bring the blade down. Make sure you're uh, beyond the teeth. And just sneak it up to the, uh, to the blade. Again, you don't want to push it against the blade because the blades will, fill, uh, will flex. So, I have no space. I have verified that my blade is 90 degrees to the top. So with our two planes verified, we can cut wood and be assured that we're going to have a square cut. So here we go. We're going to set up for a cut now. Sharp pencil, reference edge. your line. Line it up on the saw. Let's turn power on over here. Okay. Now, when you're making these cuts, and again, just like we may have pointed out earlier, we want to make sure that we get the blade on the right side of the line. So I mark an X on the waist. We want to cut on the waist side of the line. All right. So here we go. Again, safety glasses on. I always wear them in the shop. I bring the teeth to the line because I know now I know that the, where the teeth is actually going to hit the line. And then I make my cut. Okay. Chop saw gives you a really nice, good, clean cut. Okay, and you can see there are no saw marks. I've got a really nice sharp blade in it. 
and uh, notice that the, the base gives me a lot of support. I don't have, I have very few fu uh, fuzzies. So on to the next. Here we are on a table saw. Uh, what I want to be doing here is we're going to first use a modder gauge. Now my modder gauge that I got this saw got with this saw is terrible. Uh, I definitely would not want to use it, and for the reason why is because when you get it in the slot. It moves back and forth no matter how you adjust it. It's, it's, it's not going to give you a square cut because if, uh, for vibrations of the saw running and everything, uh, uh, there's no telling where that modder gauge is actually at as you're running it through the blade. Also, a little bit of resistance in a blade is going to either push or pull the modder gauge one way or the other. So, I bought an upgrade. Um, you may want to do this if you're going to use this uh, on a saw you may want to check it if your stuff is not square definitely don't use it there's no sense in doing it this is a fine precise machine uh, if you just get the right accessory for it it can be a very very precision cut machine and this way your uh, projects that you turn out with this especially for model railroading because you need stuff to be square it's going to be a, a great asset for you so what i picked up Picked up a miter gauge. Um, it's adjustable, so if when it goes down into my track, there's no side to side movement, but it glides very easily. So how are we going to do this? Let's go through a setup real fast. Um, first thing I want to do, I want to make sure that the face of my miter gauge is square to the plane of the blade. So how are we going to do this? i got a couple ways. One, we're going to use my trusty machinist square again. And basically I'll put the base on the flat of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the miter gauge and then run it up alongside of the blade and check it to the edge of the blade. Now remember, uh, you don't want to get up on the tooth, but, and just check it that there's no air gap. And that is good. If you don't have a machinist, uh, machine a square again you can go to your trusty combination square and you can see I use a square a lot take good care of it it's very very clean I've had it for many many years I'm talking at least 20 uh, how I keep it so shiny uh, I, I just make sure I keep it clean with paste wax uh, after every project I put another coat on it keeps the rust off of it okay squaring this up Again, put it on the flat of the of the, uh, uh, of the uh, square. Uh, just, I'm sorry. Put it uh, put it flat on the miter gauge. Bring it up to the blade. Make sure you're not offset on a tooth. And I am checking it. And my blade is square. All right. Now we're square this way. We know our miter gauge is square to the blade. We want to make sure the blade is square to the table, up and down wise. So how am I going to do this? So I'm going to raise the blade a little bit. Take my machinist square. Okay, and I'm going to bring it up to the blade. Make sure I'm not on a tooth. And I'm going to check the square to the blade, and I'm looking at it. That is dead on square. Okay, and again, I checked it earlier. I always check it before every project. Uh, you always want to do it. This thing can easily be knocked out. If I move it, uh, stuff could move. I mean, they're real easy to get out of square. You want to verify it square before you start cutting. Okay. So, now that I know my blade is square, how do we go, go through the cutting process? Reference edge, this side right here. We want to make sure we use that edge to scrap our line. Single pass. Bring the blade down to a safe height. And I'm ready to start my cut. We 
wait till the blade is stopped. Remove our waste. Okay. So now since we verified our tool, we're going to verify the squareness. And that is dead on perfect. Okay, and we know that this edge, because we verified our tool, that is perfect there. No movement at all. Okay, now let's say you don't have a uh, good miter gauge to use. You still want to use a table saw because uh, let's just say you want to. Let's say you don't have a, uh, a miter saw. Let's say you don't have a skill saw. Or you're at a job site and you, have, you left the rest of your tools at home. Your table saw is what you have. There is a different approach, and uh, I just want doing this because I want to show you that even though you have one tool, you'll have many options that you can use to get the cuts that you need. Okay, on this example, we're going to use a, uh, a crosscut sled built for the table saw. Okay, here we are at the table saw again, and the reason why is I wanted to show you a different option. Okay, and this one is going to be the crosscut sled. Okay, the idea of the sled is it is made square to the blade. Uh, again, I won't uh, go over the construction. There are many, many good uh, videos on uh, building one of these. Uh, so basically what I'm going to uh, show you is the cut itself. Now again, we got a square edge. We, we got our cut line made during construction. And then we have our reference edge, which is here against the back plate. We made, uh, I made a special, uh, I made a uh, I kept special attention in making sure that this was square to the cut, which in turn will make sure you get a square cut. Okay, so to do a cut here, again, bring, bring the blade up to a safe height. Okay, on this edge, I'm going to use this side as a reference edge. Okay, since I'm using this side as a reference edge, I put that side, my square on that side, draw my cut line, place it on the saw, and then now we're going to make our cut. Okay, now, by far this gives me the best cut because I got a support on the bottom side, I got support on the back side, and as you can see, after the cut, there are little to no fuzzies on it. Very, very smooth cut, very sharp blade. Okay. So is this a good choice? Well, yes it is, it is a good choice. Um, I just wanted to show you how simple it is. Um, there is always a way to get the cut that you need. Always. And this is a good example. Two different methods of uh, making a cut with, this, with one tool. Okay, here we are at the bandsaw. Uh, the idea of the bandsaw is this is kind of an unconventional tool to make a straight cut. Now it can be done. There's a lot of videos that show you it can be done. But generally a bandsaw is associated with cutting curbs. How do we get a straight cut from a machine that was designed uh, initially cut curbs? One, I use a miter gauge. Have these grooves cut into here. They're cut 90 degrees to the blade. Miter gauge fits in a slot. Now, this is the miter gauge that I got on my table saw. Uh, the miter gauge itself is a little bit too narrow for a slot, so it gave it a lot of slop on the table saw. But 
since I made the grooves to fit the motor gauge exactly, now I got very good use for the motor gauge. And it's good if I need to make a parallel cut in this from this way to the blade, or if I need to make a 90 degree cut, which is what we're going to do. I change it to cut this direction. Okay. Now, my reference I'm going to use is this edge here. So, if I'm going to use that edge for a reference, I use that reference to make my line. Single line. Using this edge as a reference, I'm going to put this edge against the reference area. Line it up with the edge. And then we're going to make our cut. Okay. Generally, your band saws. Uh, make a jagged cut. It's just by design. They're designed to cut curves. So most of the time, most of the time what's going to happen is, is you're going to get a raggedy edge. Well, since you have a reference and it's pushed at a constant rate and smooth movement going through the blade, you get a nice smooth cut. Out of a saw that generally wouldn't do it. And I'm going to show you this. Okay, and there it is. Nice smooth cut. Very little fuzzies, and the reason why is because the wood is supported on the table. Now, moment of truth. Is it square? Okay, and I almost made a mistake. Reference edge. Reference edge, and it is perfectly square. You can make a square cut in a bandsaw as long as you have a good reference. Okay, and let's do it this way. Reference edge, and it is perfectly square up and down as well. All right, moral of the story is, Whatever machine you have, hand tool, circular saw, miter gauge, table saw, band saw, and whatever else other uh, example that I don't have. There's many others. There's ready alarm saws. There's all kinds of different saws that you can use to make a 90 degree, uh, 90 degree cut. And uh, they can all be set up to do it accurately. So, um, I just wanted to show that to you that you don't have to have a shop full of tools. I have them here. Do I use them? Yes, I do. Why? Because it's fast. It fast. It saves me time. Uh, I build these layouts uh, uh, for a living. I do sell them. Uh, and the faster I can get this produced, the more I can make in a day, the more money I make in the end. Now, for the hobbyist, the model road rotor, the faster you can get wood cut out, Faster your layout gets set up, faster you get running trains. So what's it worth to you? Do you want to save a little money? Just keep in mind, it's like a teetering uh, seesaw. Uh, the more money you save, longer it takes, the better chance that you don't get a quality cut. More money you spend, faster uh, uh, the work production is, and the more accurate the cut is going to be. Okay, so really this is all about money. Uh, what, what's your layout worth to you is what it comes down to. Okay, I hope that this uh, works out for you as far as your ideas and how you want to equip yourself to build your, uh, to build your layout. At the very least, get a skill saw. Don't use a hand saw. Okay, can be done, but don't use it. All right, this is Dave.
for War Barn Trains. Uh, if you like this, subscribe. If you want to see more, uh, you'll get uh, uh, when you subscribe, you'll get uh, notifications of the next video in this series. Okay. If information is good that you uh, that uh, you know that somebody else can use, make sure you share.